Christmas shortly. This, in short, should be a war. I think they ought to check him for weapons before we go after <laughs> yeah, it. It's going to be a very physical basketball game. Rutgers improved on the defensive end of the floor. Let's take a look at your star watch. Who do you have? Well, I thought Kara made a great point. Kia Vaughn has got to get touches in the post. They can ignore her. She leads a group of four double-digit scorers from Rutgers. That's their challenge, I think, today, scoring the basketball. Lindsey Harding is the orchestra leader. She influences the game with her scoring, her passing, her leadership, and the defensive ability she brings to the table, Mike. For many people, she is just the best player in the country, not just the best player at Duke or in the ACC. Adjavon and Prince are the guards for C. Vivian Stringer, Zurich, Carsons, and Vaughn up front. Vaughn had 18 rebounds in that first game. Lindsey Harding, Wainer, and Wanisha Smith, the three guard lineup for Gail Gestenport. Gay and Bales up front. Duke, statistically a great rebounding team, but it's something they are concerned about. It may be their only perceived weakness, at least. Rutgers in red. Duke in white, and there is Harding. ACC Player of the Year. ACC Defensive Player of the Year. This, Rutgers is very athletic for us. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a pretty basketball game. Rutgers, it's really hard to look good playing against them. Bales and Vaughn, loose ball corralled by Rutgers. Prince gives it up to Adjavon. Both teams will challenge you on the defensive side of the floor. Adjavon out of Newark. No seniors on this ball club. A lot of people surprised. If they made the kind of run they did late in the year here. Knocked off Connecticut in the conference tournament. Long range jump shot by Carson. Offensive rebound to Prince. And tip back outside to Adjavon. Prince rebounds the ball well from the guard spot. She leaves Rutgers and steals as well. Duke opens in their man to man, but anticipate a lot of switching defenses. Adjavon, and she's fouled. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Dora, she said you expect an ugly game today. Well, last time these two teams met, it was anything but pretty. Rutgers suffering the worst loss in Vivian Stringer's career at Rutgers, a 40-point loss. But more importantly, they gave up 51% shooting. Horrible for a defensive coach. She said, it was the worst defensive team I've ever coached. But what changed was the freshmen started buying into the defensive philosophy. Part of the reason, Vivian, C. Vivian Stringer instituted the 55, no, not her famous 55 defense, for every point they allowed over 55, they had to run suicides. So as the players said they got so tired of running, they really clamped down during games, and pretty soon it became a habit. That defense has turned this team around. Yeah, I'd make sure nobody got over 55 either. They gave up 87 points in a game. I, I'm mathematically challenged, oh. but that's an awful lot of sprints. Well, for you slow learners, it's 32. <laughs> Nearly a steal, and now a jump ball situation back to Duke. Well, and that's what Rutgers will try to do is pressure the ball. No question, and that's their leading steals per, per game. She's averaged four and a half through two games, Epiphany Prince. Excellent anticipation skills. Backdoor cuts will be a key for Duke today. Wainer gives it up to Smith, has that great first step, and then lost the ball to Kia Vaughn. Zurich, pretty good outside shooter, gets it to Adjumon. Rutgers being patient, this is Prince. Adjumon trying to pass it inside. And they got the signals mixed up. She's a high assist person, but a high turnover person as well. 10th consecutive Street 16. For Gail Gaston for the only thing missing on her resume is a national championship and she is number one in the country right now especially after the bitter disappointment of last year lots of talk including an article down in the Austin papers that she'll be the 
leading candidate for the opening at Texas. She addressed it with us yesterday, Mike. She said, listen, I'm focused on this team. So she basically answered it by not answering it. Bales with the miss, actually an air ball. Well, you don't like those non-denial denials. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't get us anywhere, does it? <laughs> but you gotta appreciate people trying to keep their options open. Prince with a miss. Both teams a little tight coming out. Rutgers with a 2-0 lead after two and a half minutes. Bales, no, nice high-low pass to Gay, and Karim Gay gets her first bucket. She averages 8.8 .8 points a game. She's got the wingspan of a 6'8 player in a 6'2 frame. Yeah, and that was a mismatch. Ajavon ends up on her in a box, so good recognition by Duke to take advantage of that. Epiphany Prince, probably more well-known than anything for scoring 113 points in a high school game and averaging 41 points a game in high school. So she can obviously get hot and fill it up. Duke trying to push. Smith into Bales, and Bales just lurched into one and missed everything. Good defense without fouling by Kia Vaughn. Just challenge the shot, but do not reach over with those arms. And Bales has to be a little smoother than that to be effective. She can power up, you know, one power dribble and go straight up and you know, have your shoulders moving toward the rim, not out of the baseline. Matia Adjavon gets it inside to Kia Vaughn over Bales and got the roll. This Kia Vaughn, who had 18 rebounds in that first game, did not score except from the free throw line. So if she's going to give him some offense, that's a big boost for Rutgers. Yeah, that's a highly skilled post. There are times where I feel like Rutgers misses her. If she shows you the numbers, get her the ball. Wayner did a great job just to get that ball up. She had trouble fielding it on the pass from Bales down around her knees. And that ball's out of bounds, out to Duke. Both teams a little tight as we start. Rutgers with a two-point lead. Will Kia Vaughn be the X Factor for the Scarlet Knights? Nice. The NCAA. I am going to spend tomorrow alternating between taking naps and getting sunburned. <laughs> but you know what? You can actually take a nap and get sunburned at the same time. Yes, Maybe you don't have to alternate that's anything. That's correct. Yeah. But can you drink at the same time? Absolutely. <laughs> In the sun, your buzz gets a little, it's a little faster. True. Your knees disappear <laughs> in four hours instead of five. <laughs> I always enjoy it when my knees disappear. Did I have that on in the open? Very nice. You guys going home? Very nice. Stay? Yeah. Okay, good. That was good. What's that? Take some cardinal pitchers. I can't believe it. I mean, through uh, three days. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented on ESPN by Orbitz. Say big at Orbitz.com. Just Orbitz and go. Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Rutgers with a two-point lead.
A couple of very athletic basketball teams. Probably the advantage in that category goes to Rutgers. You wonder if Allison Bales is going to return to the level she was at in last year's NCAA tournament. She was a major factor in getting them into the NCAA championship game. Misses that one, and Vaughn snatches the rebound. She is dominating the defensive backboards for the first few minutes of this basketball game. She's got a great frame, highly skilled power post. Kia Vaughn is a major talent. Three rebounds in less than five minutes. Vaughn on the perimeter this time gives it up to Epiphany Prince. And there's a loose ball that's tipped out of bounds. Shot clock at seven, so they'll have to hustle. And Adjavon, I'm not sure, realizes it. Yes, she does. And Bales blocks it out of bounds. Zero on the shot clock. And are they going to put any time back? Yeah, or think... say it's a violation? There should be some time on there, I think. Yeah, there's the defensive presence. She hasn't missed that yet. They're going to put one second back. Vaughn got away with a push off and nearly made the basket. Offensive rebound to Matia Adjavon. She's out of Newark, New Jersey, a 5'8 junior. The Rutgers certainly isn't intimidated so far. Great tie up by Bales. Vaughn put the ball over her head, and Bales just said, give me that. Yeah, that's a mistake. If you've got a 6'7 defender who has been asked throughout the course of her career to do a lot of different things defensively, she's assertive and aggressive on that end. Air ball out of the corner. Rutgers is getting the loose balls. They are out fighting Duke when they have an opportunity. You see Vivian Stringer's teams do not lack for toughness. They are going to be aggressive defensively. They're going to try to set the tempo. You are going to have to work for everything you get. Bales kicks it out to Juanita Smith. Now here's Harding, who hasn't been much of a factor yet. She's a great driver. Tries a circus shot and misses, however. It has not been artistic, Mike Patrick. No. This is exactly what we expected. No, the tape of this one so far not going in the time capsule. Vaughn blocked by Allison Bales. And Allison Bales, number one all time in the NCAA tournament for block shots. She's come up huge in all of these games. Takes the body blow from Kia Vaughn, but doesn't allow it to space her, so she's still in position to block shots. She seems so much more athletic on the defensive side than the offensive end of the court. I think it's a mentality on the offensive end. I do too. Yeah. Harding knocked away. Great play by Prince. Adjumon back to Prince. Pretty. Defense to offense. This is what they do. Straight up man to man. Again, you'll see a lot of different looks from Rutgers. That vaunted 55 defense that Holly mentioned in her open. Duke only one of six. Abby Wainer tries to change it and bricks a three. That's a shot Gail Guestin Force was probably not looking for in that possession. Well, up until the last game, it was Wainer's three ability that had carried this basketball team. They had a play with her in foul trouble and Bales at a subpar level. So that gave them confidence, but they looked shaken early offensively. And Rutgers does not. Vaughn kept it alive. Out of bounds to Duke. Kia Vaughn showing how valuable she is inside. Well, defensively, they are going to challenge every pass. They're going to put pressure on the basketball. A strip on the help by Prince, who's their leading steals person, turns into points on the opposite end. Good stuff by Rutgers. And Harding, with nearly a two to one assist to turnover ratio, is not going to turn it over very much. Smith goes baseline. That's a block. That's close. She's got an amazingly quick feet, folks. She was in foul trouble at Michigan State. Her team is able to survive. See, it's close, and I say that because the left hand of Wanisha Smith came up. I think it was the right call, but if you're Vivian, you're saying, hey, watch the left hand of Wanisha Smith on the dribble drive. 
Bales trying to get something going offensively, and she will draw a foul on Kia Vaughn. That is one on the sophomore from the Bronx. And there's Bales' numbers in the NCAA tournament. Remember Ruth Riley and Rebecca Lobo, how good they were in recent years and going way back, Cheryl Miller. Well, Bales just sailing past all of them. Of course, a lot of that is getting many more opportunities as well, but she has been sensational on the defensive end. Knocks down that free throw. She's good from the line, 74% on the year. And on the season as well, she's averaging four and a half blocks a game. Well, she's a nice prospect at the next level. Jessica Davenport, the better finisher out of Ohio State on the offensive end. Bales, better defender. Rutgers can't afford foul trouble today, Mike. No. Adjavon kicks it out to Prince, reverses direction. Vaughn almost lost it and did. Three turnovers for Rutgers through the first eight minutes. And if you see Vivian Stringer, this is one of your better offensive teams, maybe as talented as you've been since you went to the Final Four in Philadelphia with the likes of Shawnetta Stewart and Tasha Point. Duke only has three points so far. They're one of the highest scoring teams in the nation, 76-2. If you're Duke, one of your keys is defending the dribble drive. Ajavon, Prince, and Carson can all get off on the dribble. Here's the bad news. They've scored three points. Here's the good news. They're only down by three. <laughs> three's more like a football game. Carson with a miss. One of the officials this morning said, I've got the war. Well, it's exactly what he expected. This is a defensive struggle. Allison Bales, all six foot seven, says twice on the pipes with Tiajavon. Then on the post up by Vaughn, no ma'am, not happening. First one to 10 wins. <laughs> If anyone gets an 11 point lead, then we go. You gotta get to 10 by two. <laughs> and then who gets a winner? <laughs> well, I'm feeling better now. The Good. The worst yeah. part of this day is over. Yes. Thank God. Monday night becomes easy. Yeah. I'm a happy camper. Yeah. I don't know. We're sort of hoping, Trey. It's only 6-3 now. Three field goals in the first eight and a half minutes. What we need is a soccer-style kicker to increase the scoring right now. This is not the first one to 11 pickup game. <laughs> it stays on the floor. Duke is just stone cold at the beginning. They'll get a break. And a defensive rebound here. 
That'll be the first on Epiphany Prince. You do not want to get Duke into the early bonus. So 73% free throw shooting team. And Allison Bales knocks down one from the corner. Showing some unexpected range. Here comes your trap. You know it's coming. So you've got to handle it, stay spaced, get ball reversal. Brittany Mitch, number 22, is in for the first time for Duke. Nice runner by Carson. My the first bucket. Yeah, because both defenses are so good, today might come down to which team makes better individual plays because they're not going to let you run your normal offenses. You're going to have to do something outside of what you generally do. Bales again on the pass from Weiner. So Allison Bales, who was very ineffective right around the basket, moves out and knocks down two 16 footers. Yeah, why take the physical abuse when you can go ahead and hit that 15 foot baseline jump shot? One from each side, respectively, for her. And now again, another switch. They came with a half court trap. Now this is a 2 3 zone. They've played man to man. You've seen three different looks from Duke already. Duke within a point. Not attacking this zone very well, and that's a turnover. Travel on Carson, the fourth against Rutgers in this first half. A year ago, she was the MVP of the Bridgeport region because she averaged 13 and a half points and nine rebounds. So she's making shots, Allison Bales. A little kick out from Wainer turns into a deuce by Allison Bales. Good for the chance to take the lead. Bales, good pass inside. Good block by Vaughn, but a foul on Vaughn. That'll be her second, that's big. It's five team fouls already by Rutgers. And Joy Cheek, the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina, will go to the line. She averages five and a half points, four rebounds a game. C. Vivian Stringer will go to her bench for the first time, and she'll bring in Rashida Juniide at 6-4, who was a tremendous rebounder and a tremendous shot blocker. Tends to get in foul trouble in a hurry, but she's very effective while she's in there. Chadwick is under 10 minutes a game, but she's a player who had to adjust to the level of work, and once she's done that, she's been a decent player for Rutgers off the bench. Good move by Carson, lost the ball. Zurich got it back, and Heather Zurich hits a bucket. That player did not play a lot last year. Harding ahead to Wainer. Couldn't hit it. Good defensive pressure as Rutgers able to get back and cause some trouble. Abby Wainer does not look like herself to start this basketball game. She's 0 for 4. Whitney Ray, number 35, now on the court for Rutgers. And she'll take one from 20 feet. Harding kicks it ahead. And the lay-in. So Duke finally gets something out of the break as Brittany Mitch will put it in. And Harding has no problem with kicking that hit thing ahead with 50-foot passes, does she? No, and they cover an awful lot of ground, like, with that long pass. Runouts give them such easy buckets if they can hit them. Now you don't want to have to run your offense against a Rutgers defense that will grind you. So you get easy opportunities. That's a bonus. Prince goes baseline into a double team. Got the ball back. And the shot clock is down at one, however. Adjavon is going to come back in. And Bales for Duke will get a rest. Prince will check out, and Carson will have to remind her teammates there's only one on the shot clock. And they get a shot, but a shot clock violation. The only thing they could do was get it in bounds, and Adjavon on a cut sort of threw it up over her shoulder because of the shot clock limit. Both defenses are going to test your ability to score, and Ray comes right out of the basketball game. That was a mistaken substitution right there by Rutgers. Prince was supposed to stay on the floor. Duke by one. 
Good exchange, but a travel call against Joy Cheek. That's the fourth Duke turnover. 7.55 to go first half. The Duke guards having a tough time scoring. They still lead by one. A lot of Duke jerseys in the house, a lot of Duke blue. Bales have so far. AA Wins Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz is brought to you by Pontiac, the official performance machine. The NCAA Women's Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz is brought to you by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Duke by one with 7.55 to go first half of play here in Greensboro. Let's check in with Holly. Gail Gaston, of course, just told her Duke team in the huddle that she likes how they're playing on defense. She reminded them that they're switching the one through four position. And then she also really pointed out she thinks they have a huge mismatch at the four position on offense. She really challenged her post players to start taking advantage of that size differential. We'll see if they're able to do it here, Doris. Yeah, that goes to Heather Zurich because she plays more like a four, uh, Holly Rowe. And they believe Cheek or Karim Gay can have success against her on the offensive end. Let's see if that plays out. Great point. Rutgers having trouble getting anything near a shot, and that should be a travel, and it is. As the shot clock was winding down again, five turnovers against the Rutgers. Lowest first half score this year, 25 points. They're going to have to hustle to get the 25. Now, this is, uh, that was against Bowling Green, the team we just saw lose. Good entry pass, but then Gay lost the ball on the double team. That was what Holly was just talking about right there, trying to take advantage of Heather Zurich. It just didn't work. The rotations were there by Rutgers, so clearly perhaps they were anticipating yeah. that Holly Rowe. Well, Wayner and Harding, the starting guards average 28 points between them. They have yet to score. Nice cut inside by Adjavon. That was Duke's concern. Could they contain off the dribble? Ajavon, when healthy, is an explosive offensive player. Harding left alone and buries it. Well, there's the last person you want to leave alone, inside or outside. Amazing how she's transformed herself from a player who played with a group of stars and turning herself into a star. Number one all-time in assists, number three all-time in steals, number 12 all-time scorers. She is become such a do everything player as Holly said Junaid or Junaid commits the offensive foul the women's NCAA championship presented by Orbitz on ESPN continues tonight at 9 Eastern KO and NC State against Gino Oriama and the Huskers
not Huskers, Huskies. I read that wrong. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented on ESPN by Orbit. It's also available in high definition. Gay, again, dribbling into trouble. Poor and decision. Prince travels. Yeah, poor decision by Prince. And they, you know, they might credit the turnover to Carson, but that's just rushing. And that's a young player, Mike, playing in her first NCAA tournament, third game for Prince, obviously, but a little bit of a rush and a push. Mitch comes out and Wayner back in. <laughs> Look at this, 14 <laughs> points. That's a little unfair. That's for a whole game, 76-2, but it just shows the struggles. Now they go to Gay and they finally get it right. They got her free instead of in the middle of a double or a triple team, and Karim Gay has four. Slip right down the lane line. Good read on the offensive end. What are they giving you? Mati Adjavon outside. Look at the defense by Smith. He's just been dogging Carson so she can't even get a look at the basketball. Well, Karim Gay is a player who may be amongst the most improved in the country. It looks like a ball screen. Instead, she slips right to the rim, and Rutgers' Maya McCurdy slow to react. Mike, if you're defending what you think is a screen and roll, have a forearm on the player that's the post. That way it prohibits that dive to the rim. Foul was on Abby Weiner, her first. Carson picked up by Harding, who was just going to torture anybody defensively. That's <laughs> Yvonne looking for some kind of an opening against Smith. Zurich will take the long shot, long rebound, controlled by Rutgers, and a beautiful pass inside to Junide, who gets her first bucket. Yeah, great anticipation by by. Essence Carson understanding attack the body of Bale. She'll come over and you got an easy shot on the opposite side. Once again, right back inside, and Karim Gay has six. And Doris, you're right, they found something and they're gonna go to the well until Rutgers stops it. Essence Carson has made herself into a basketball player, came in as a very good athlete, but has improved her skills each and every season. The offensive board understanding that Bales is that weak side defender, so the kick to Junide and an easy one. And this is the matchup. Holly Rowe talked about it. Gail Guest, of course, told us yesterday, we will take advantage of Rutgers on the four spot, and they're getting the easy shot after easy shot now. You had mentioned earlier about Gail Guest and Gores with a uh, denial slash non-denial about maybe going somewhere else. Women's basketball, to me, still in its infancy as far as coaching movements and what schools are willing to pay a lot of money to get the top coaches. Yeah, there were some rumors early on when the Florida job opened early that Gail Guest, of course, would be a leading candidate because financially that is a very good job, but it's not a better job than Duke. The same can't be said for the University of Texas. Compensation, facilities, administrative support, and Austin is a heck of a place to live. But tell you, I, I think she'd be intrigued by it. She's not going to address it. She talked to her players, said you will hear a lot of rumors, and you're gonna see things in the paper. Do not pay attention to anything you see. You focus on the task at hand. There are some big time jobs open, and the domino effect in women's college basketball right. is gonna be major league. And it may just come down to how much Duke wants to keep Gail Guestin for. Exactly right. Shot clock at three. Adjavon will have to pull up and take the jumper. No. Tipped out of bounds out to Rutgers. The Duke crowd predominant here. They didn't like that call. I thought there was a push on Junaid, or she would have come down with that rebound. So the non-call having an impact. Duke with a four-point lead. Zurich gives it up to Prince. Rutgers with six offensive rebounds on it. Well, they, they have spent a lot of time in their offense 40 feet away just dribbling the basketball before they even make any kind of a move. There is another offensive rebound, and Carson kicks it back out to Adjumar. That's a great point. And now you're playing 60 seconds of defense, Mike, because they're standing out holding the ball for so long, and then they're offensive rebounding it. Finish the possession defensively by checking out if you do. Adjumar reverse, can't hit it. Tips outside and taken away by Wainer. 
So all that work got him no points. Bales, she'll go low this time. So Gay and Bales switch spots. And instead of Kareem Gay getting on the layup, it's Allison Bale. Yeah, Kia Vaughn is sitting over there on the bench just watching it. And Rashida Junaid is getting zero respect from the officials. She's been pushed, no call. And on the other end, she's got nothing to do when she gets in that deep of a hole defensively with Allison Bales on a post up. There's a bump, and Adjavon fouled before the shot. Well, at 6 7, Allison Bales has a face up game at 15, but ideally, you'd like the bulk of her scoring to come right here. She puts her under the orange, and it's an easy deuce. Bales picks up her first foul. We'll be back in a second. Yes. Says, yeah. Six, seven, seven of nine. nine. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. Gotta survive this 253 without uh, Kia Vaughn. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're gonna go away. No. I just don't think they have enough offense to win. Uh huh. <clears throat> Boy, Tiffany Prince must have scored on a lot of layups in high school. Probably so. Okay. Feel the heat. I love that shirt. Nice little massage therapist from Dan. All right, Trey, thanks very much. And uh, Doris Burke made the same point that it's danger time right now for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And there's uh, Aubrey Johnson enjoying a rest and watching this ball game as she was one of the stars of Arizona State's advance to the Elite Eight in the first game against Bowling Green. And they can't fall behind by double digits. Is I'm not sure they've got enough offense to come back from that kind of deficit. That's the point Carol Lawson is making. You're trying to survive this half without Kia Vaughn on the box. Prince had a cold hand so far. Another outlet pass that they can't take advantage of. And the shot missed by Cheek, who had a pretty good look. Those are the ones you have to convert. Well, I don't think you can get a better look. She made a nice move. We've got to finish plays. Adjavon, who now averages nearly four assists a game, but has almost as many turnovers as she does assists. They do have three different guards who handle the ball very well for this club. Great deny off the ball by Lindsey Harding, not letting Prince touch it. And Duke's defense really coming to the fore. Rutgers not getting good shots. Harding. Cheek struggled with it and then forced it up. 
in the middle of the defense. Yeah, both teams outstanding. Things are hard to come by on the offensive end. A minute and a half to go in the first half. Bales just waiting, working in the lane. They funnel you to her. I mean, this, this group is smart enough to understand that if they're going to get beat off the dribble, the place they're going to get beat is right into Allison Bales. She has four blocks in the first half, averages four and a half a game. Rutgers has only hit two of its last 12 tries from the field. Shot clock winding down again out of the corner. That's an air ball. Wanisha Smith with the rebound off of Adjavon's miss. Good retrieval by Bales. Harding looks toward Gail Gustin for what she wants to run in this set. Another low pass inside the Bales, and she will draw a foul. That looked like a pretty good block there. Sure did. They are slipping that. They're not coming with a real ball screen on the defensive end. If you get beat, guess who erases your mistake? Allison Bales. She is constantly in help mode. Bales only one block away from the single season all time record. Tied for second right now with 151. Bales with a miss. Amy Williams at the top of that list, Jackson State. She already holds the all-time NCAA record. See Kia Vaughn giving instruction. She has very much been a mother to the young Rutgers post players. And she's an old sophomore. Three on one and a basket. Junai. They are missing Abby Wiener because of the pressure up front. Nice screen by Gay. Harding double teamed, had the ball taken away. This Prince is, guarded by Mitch. This is not an easy game to come with a crossover dribble. No. Boy, good look for Prince, and she missed everything on the layup. Expecting, I think, some defensive pressure, and it never showed up. Bad pass by Mitch. She throws it away. Rutgers trying to run again, and there's Allison Bales with another block. And then she threw it away. Thought her teammate was going to come out for the outlet pass. Six and a half seconds left. If you're the coaches, you're disgusted. You saw the reaction from Gail Guest, of course. You made a great defensive play, but you give it right back. Carson picked up her dribble, didn't realize the shot clock was running down, and a wasted effort for Rutgers. You've got to know what that shot clock and the game clock says at all times. They didn't even get off a shot. So Duke gets off to a horribly slow start, but ends up with a halftime lead at 21-16 over Rutgers. Here's Holly Rowe. Coach Stringer, that's the lowest point total in the first half by Duke this season. But what has to change for you on offense? We've got to execute. We're getting steals. We're getting opportunities. But we're throwing them away. We're getting it to the wrong people at the wrong time in the wrong place. So we just need to be able to take advantage of the turnover situations. Who are the right people? I mean, it depends on who it is. I mean, whoever ever happens to be that hot hand, whoever happens to be free. And you got to make sure that people are in places where they can finish. You don't give it to a center who's 15 feet off, or you're looking at a, at a, a three-on-two break when they split, then you look to attack it yourself. I mean, you know, we just got to make good decisions. Just calm down. All right. Thanks, Coach. Well, she's right about that. The wrong people, the wrong place at the wrong time. It's not a good combination. Let's go to Trey Wingo with the ESPN Halftime Report.
to rain, nobody hot is us up in your spot. Giving it to you, play by play, your shot for shot. ESPN is in the house, it's about to pop. The NC Double Layers got the game on lock, and we can't Let's go!
Ain't nobody hot as us up in your spot Giving it to you play by play and shot for shot ESPN is in the house, it's about to pop The NCAA has got the game on lock And we can't be Let's go! See Vivian Stringer put the point on it At the half with her team down five We passed it to the wrong players At the wrong place, at the wrong time And they only shot 20 Four percent. You need a tremendous effort against Duke. They're the best team in the country. They're number one. Twenty-four percent is not your best effort. No, and there's a couple of things Duke has taken advantage of. It was not a wealth of offense in that first half. But when you look at the coaching adjustment for the second half, one of the things Duke took advantage of was the slip on the screen. It looks like Ali Bales is going to set a screen and. Junaid is in awful position. She needs to either have a forearm in the back of Alley Bales to prevent that slip or just be a little bit lower. See the anticipation. They scored twice on this, got two free throws, and other than taking advantage of that four spot, that was the only place Rutgers was hurt on the defensive end. Coaching adjustment brought to you by Home Depot. Duke with a five-point lead. They shoot 42% to Rutgers 24. Rutgers wins the battle of the boards. We told you Duke was concerned about that, even though statistically they're one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Duke coach Gail Gessenkors just told me at halftime that her team is being too impatient right now. She said every time we're just trying to force it down into the post. She said she's looking for more passing, especially more ball reversals. She also said she started, their team has started to have some success inside, so she thinks Rutgers is going to collapse more. She said that should leave us wide open to get our guards involved on the perimeter. Game of college basketball is usually a 40-minute adjustment. Zurich, she needs to make some outside shots, and she starts the second half with that one. Good patience by Mati Ajavon. You have to understand that Duke will come with traps, and it's how you react to those traps that dictate your success. She gets out of the trap, kicks opposite for an easy shot. Wainer, nice path to Smith. Wainer and Harding really haven't been factors in this game. Uh, two capable offensive players. Wainer from deep three, Harding off the dribble. Maybe that basket will help Juanisha Smith. She's had a poor NCAA as far as scoring so far. And Duke now in a 2-3 zone. Rutgers not a prolific outside shooting team. 
Carson. Harding with a rebound. Look at her kick it ahead every time. Smith on the run and what a block by Carson. Elevated on that one, didn't she? You said the athleticism of Rutgers has been tremendous. Well, here's a prime example. Close out on the guy who has two steps on you. Nice job by Carson. Bales, nobody's gonna block that one. Essence Carson at only six feet has the wingspan of a player that's 6'5", and she shows it. Good execution off the inbounds pass. Rutgers fell asleep defensively. 25-18, Duke with its biggest lead. I like this defense because I'm not sure that they've got enough perimeter shooters that can consistently knock down jump shots outside of Zurich to make this deficit into a positive. And I'm not sure they can penetrate against it either. Smith picked up by Prince, now back to Wainer. And Wainer will fire. She's got the range. Abby Wainer, who has been averaging 17 points in the NCAA, has now hit eight out of 10 three-point shots from long range in the tournament. Runner by Prince. And a tie-up underneath. Possession arrow will give it to Duke. Execution is going to be critical as this game wears on. You've got to execute on both sides of the ball. Watch Allison Bales. There's going to be a switch out by Kia Vaughn because she anticipates the pass. She's trying to cover up. Well, <laughs> Epiphany Prince, the freshman, got completely lost. 17.49 to go in the ball game. Great second half start for Duke. Are these longer than normal in the NCAA? I think they are. Oh. Or let's put it this way, they can be. Yeah, they feel it. I don't know, as long as they don't add a third game, I'm fine. <laughs> Try to slip another one in on us, I'm in trouble. Yeah. How you doing, Phil? Terrific. Great, great, great. Good. How about you, Chip? Standing. Standing. <laughs> Outsta outstanding. Yeah. Duke leads Rutgers by 10. Abby Wainer, such a great shooting guard for Duke. But last year, she had a chance in that national championship game to put it away. She did not hit the shot. And in the locker room afterwards, she was devastated, feeling she had let her entire team down. The coaches told her to take a month off, regroup. And one thing she heard from a friend was that she lingered too long on past mistakes. So she's written on her shoes next play she says she's really learned this she doesn't even look at the shoes anymore because she moves on guys no clearer example than today she was over four in the first half came out firing though and hit the first three nice job holly that's that's a really big thing for her adjavon bales tried to catch her from behind ill advisedly and gets the foul you compound your mistake you had made the turnover let it go Little mishandled by Wanisha Smith. So what? If you're Allie Bales, you can contest this, but do it without fouling. Hey, 
And Javon at the line. 5'8 junior from Newark, New Jersey. She dates Ray Rice, their Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback on the football team. Since when they get on a basketball court, she can take them one on one. <laughs> there she helps force a turnover. The ball back to Adjavon. Rutgers trying to make something happen with its defense. Hey, what? Well, you can beat Ray Rice at anything. You're doing a good job. Well, good timeout by Vivian Stringer. That kind of regrouped and settled them down. Vaughn is back in there, and they lose the ball out of bounds. Last touch by Duke with 11 seconds to go. Vaughn was on the bench quite a bit in the first half with two early fouls. They're going to need her. Finally, a perimeter shot. Adjabon. She was their MVP in the Big East tournament. Did not shoot a high percentage, but gave them offense. Double team against Harding. And a timeout by Gail Gastoncores. That is such a smart timeout. She saved another turnover. Yep, yeah, and it's not about how many seconds we're going to go off the clock. As they use nine seconds just inbounding the basketball, catching and dealing yeah. with the double team. Does that give you a sense of how much speed and how good those double teams are by Rutgers? Nine seconds went off the shot clock. And fortunately for them in women's basketball, there's no 10 second call in the backcourt. Duke has been to the Final Four several times, but been unsuccessful. 99 against Purdue, and Carol and Peck led the Boilermakers to their first national title. Elena Beard, part of that great team. 2002, Stacy Dale's Oklahoma Sooners did the job, and last year, overtime, Brenda Fries and that great Maryland team beat Duke by three. And all of those coaches, Andy Landers, the most wins without a championship, Gale second. Runner by Harding. Well, against the pressure, it's attack to score. It's not attack to beat the pressure. If you want to put some pressure on Rutgers, Duke wants to say, okay, we will make you pay for that. That's the phrase. you got to make them pay. 30-24, Blue Devils over the Scarlet Knights. Vaughn, she'll take a long shot. She is not going to get Allison Bales to go out and chase her at 20 feet. Smith on the break. Thought that was a charge and she got away with it. Excellent defense by Essence Carson. Adjavon back the other way. Had a shot and decided against it. Can't be loose with the basketball. Poor shots are as bad as turnovers. That was not a good shot, as you mentioned, by Adj or by Vaughn. Make sure you get good looks here. Pull-up jumper by Carson. They're starting to find the range. They've cut the lead to four. Pressure, almost another steal. And see, Vivian Stringer wanted a double team there. She's really upset with Adjavon because she didn't come over and help on that double team. If she had, they would have had another steal. Uh, Lindsay Hart, and this was against the pressure. She goes right to the rim. Nice soft touch. The margin is four. Boy, their speed is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a uh, chip, I think you're right. I don't and Boy, look at those eyes, completely focused on what Gail is saying. There are moments you look to that coach for answers. They're looking. This is them chatting with each other when they came off. Yeah, yeah. They're totally into it. Yes. I'm telling you, I don't think, 
I don't think they've faced that kind of speed yet. Can we show the song? Great catch, guys. You want to take it out of break? No, I think you, no. Do, a, you do a better job with this No, stuff. no, 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 no. You, you understand what's going on in here? Okay. You do a better job with this. Okay. And it'll give you more time if you take it. Okay. is still winning by four, but moments before the break, as the pressure has increased by Rutgers, the two guards from Duke really interacting with one another. I think that these are two players who are dealing with incredible team speed and traps. You see the look on Wayner's face. They were anxiously awaiting Gail Gessenfor's arrival, and Vivian Stringer is intense and focused and passionate and their players are looking to her for direction. And that is a motivated group of athletes who completely are focused, Rutgers. This is a great battle. I know it's low scoring, but for artistic ability, a zero. For competitiveness, a 10. Exactly. Mitch kicked it out to Harding. This is Bales. Gail Guestin course has gone to her bench trying to get a breather for some players. And a good pass to Gay, who'd been quiet for a long, long time. Got her a good entry pass in the easy lane. Now, Maya McCurdy has been absolutely abused on the defensive end. It almost seems like when, when Duke sees her coming to the game, they go right at whoever is she is checking. That's good scouting. Either from previous games or from the last time you played them, which was a blowout in Duke's favor. This, hardly that. 32 26. One and done for Rutgers. Duke faithful dominating this crowd. They get it to Bales. The shot blocked by McCurdy. She certainly has some hops, but will pick up the foul. Freshman out of Cincinnati. Her second personal. Let's go to Holly. Checking in with Gail Gaston course during that last huddle, the message she had for her team is, look, we've lost our poise. They were starting to panic against that press of Rutgers. She said, we've got more maturity than this. Let's show some maturity. Do not get so flustered. Let's get our poise back right here, guys. To their credit, they came right out of that timeout, moved the ball down the floor, and got an open look for Krim Gay. Okay, Holly, three out of five from the line for Bales. She has 11 points on the afternoon just about at her average and almost at her average with block shots as well was still 1440 to go in this ball game. Well, that video we showed you when we first came out of break speaks exactly to what Holly was talking about. The faces are parting and, and Wayner. But you're right, Holly, they come out, they execute. That's why you wisely use timeouts. You recognize when your players are struggling. Now Duke trying to ratchet up the defensive pressure which is something they have always been able to do. Prince for three. Epiphany Prince. Was a tremendous scorer in high school. She's going to have to be in the last 14 minutes here to help her ball club. She's respectable from out there in the season 36. She didn't show that in the first half. Mitch was wide open, didn't want the shot, but Harding will take it. Long rebound kicked out to McCurdy. She'll wait for help and gets it to Adjumon. Great drive, used the glass and knocked it home. 34-31. Don't be intimidated when you get your shot blocked. Five second call, that's a turnover. Here comes Wanisha Smith back in the game. 11 turnovers by Duke. Yeah, Ajavon, great off the dribble. Change of pace, get to the opposite side. The defender's top foot was up, and she blew right past it. And part of playing inside is knowing Bales there and how much you have to alter your shot. You take a normal shot, it's coming right back in your grill. Yeah, Stacy talked about how many shots she altered. Forget about the blocks. How many did she change? Matia Ajavon pulls it out. Ten on the shot clock. They have not started their offensive set yet. Four on the shot clock. Ajavon has to force one up. Great defense by Duke. 
fails. Mitch doesn't even look for a shot from out there. Wainer will. Offensive rebound knocked out of bounds out to Rutgers. That ball went right to Brittany Mitch. She tried to put it up and had it swatted away and then lost it. Gail Guess, of course, looking at Abby going, let's go, Abby. She's a little bit frustrated. She goes over to the official, has a conversation. And with Harding on the bench, it is up to Wainer to lead this basketball team. Wainer or Wanisha Smith? She averages 14.3 points a game. She and Harding produce the points for this ball club. Three-pointer would tie it. Add Javon thought better of penetrating any further. That's a miss. Kick out to Smith ahead to Wainer. Wainer with a left hand. Abby Wainer only with five points, but that was big. And a nice pass by Wanisha Smith. Covers a lot of ground, and Wainer is exceptional with her left hand. She finishes around the rim as well with that hand as her dominant hand. And Duke loves to get runouts. When that shot goes up, somebody takes off. Edge of a nice penetration and a beautiful pass. It's not just the first person who gets by, it's when the help comes over and nobody helps the helper. So it's an easy shot opportunity. That dribble drive is proving a lot for Duke to contend with. Smith, very capable handling the ball, averages four assists a game. It's going to be a hold and yep. a good call. Adjavon trying to prevent the entry pass picks up her second foul on the day. 11.27 to go. They absolutely believe they can win this game, no question. And then they went away from it for some reason. Well, you know what? You're exactly right. And you know what they're doing, Chip, is they're, they're keeping the ball away from the post with great ball pressure, either in the backcourt or even out front in the half and quarter court. You're right. They definitely think they can win. There's a nice feel about Rutgers on that sideline. I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, and what about the other side? Look at that body language. You know, we're taught that, you know, how much of communication is, is body language. It's so little what you're saying. It's more about how you're. Yes, yep. I see her back there sticking her head in. I love it. <laughs> well, well. head on something here. <laughs> Wish we had that answer, Trey, but I tell you what, Arizona State watching this game has to be encouraged, I think, by their chances in the final off the performance of these two teams in this game. Yeah, you've got two teams that are really stingy on the defensive end. Harding and Wiener struggling to score against this pressure defense that Rutgers comes at you with. It's been no easier for Rutgers on the offensive end. Remember, in the UConn 
Rutgers Big East final. Ru Connecticut only scored 47 points. Duke is going to need some big baskets down the stretch, and Bales has been their offense this afternoon. Another after an early struggle. Yes. Yeah. Another key execution coming off the timeout and the inbounds pass. We've seen them do this before. I love to see what coaches do off the timeouts, what they set up, what they try to do. Tells me a lot. You're right. You always comment on that when somebody comes out of the huddle. Yeah. It's good coaching. I think that is. I, I think it's outstanding coaching to be able to, to get, in essence, what are free points off of how smart you are. Yes. Are you paying attention to who's on the floor for yeah. the opponent as well as your personnel? This is Zurich. The lead is six as we hit the 11 minute mark. And again, the shot clock's down to five. Adjavon has to pull up. You have to wonder about the Rutgers offense that spends about 15 seconds of the possession way out past the circle, basically doing nothing. Yeah, 10 times in the first half, they took it below 10 on the shot clock. Freddie Kyle, John Manager, as usual, doing a spectacular job for us. They were 0 for 6 from 3 beyond the arc in that first half. So can they score enough points? Clearly, they can hold Duke in check on the offensive end. Adjavon now only 4 out of 15. Bales, tough pass. Good defense by Adjavon. Adjavon goes to the floor. Thought she was fouled. So did I. I thought she got a low bridge. She was waiting for the whistle. <laughs> She's fortunate that they didn't turn it over. They need Ajavon. She brings great toughness. Carson hasn't done much. Neither is Prince. Ajavon, good hesitation dribble. Got the bucket and threw the foul on Bales. We've seen her make this play several times in this game, folks. She's got great athletic ability, but she's also got change of pace. That one little hesitation throws Allison, let her get her shoulders by, and look at this. Leans in, initiates contact, and scores it. She still has a rod in her leg from a stress fracture, and when she came back after the rehab and the surgery, she was out of shape, uh, overweight, and her minutes were really restricted, as you could understand, with that kind of injury and that kind of surgery. But she has really responded from that. And coming into this tournament, she has really started to play her best basketball. Not an easy thing to do. Condition yourself in season. That's usually an no. out of season thing. Absolutely. And she did not have that opportunity. Turnaround jump shot. That one was blocked by Carson. The Rutgers defense, they are so athletic, keeping them in this game. Prince had a three and decided against it. Look at Harding. It's annoying. Well, it's the kind of thing in a pickup game when she guards you, it just drives you nuts. Yes. Baseline drive by Prince throws up an air ball. Harding ahead to Mitch. She holds up and waits for help, threw it away. Prince. Well, looky here. Two point ball game. Now Harding, and Harding was held. You know, Prince didn't hang her head. She made a young mistake, took a poor shot, got herself in trouble. But she didn't hang her head. Instead, she made a play on the defensive end. Look at this. Just great hands for the player who leads them in steals. Came into the game with. 83 and turns into a deuce. It was a lazy pass by Brittany Mitch to set up that turnover. You got to have some snap on these passes against Rutgers or they'll be going the other way. That's exactly right because Rutgers is here to play folks. They are going nowhere and their hustle has been shown throughout the course of this game. You mentioned early in this one that Rutgers was the team getting the loose balls. Well it's a theme that has continued. They've pounded the offensive glass. They've been quick to the basketball. They've never given up on a play. The outstanding athleticism has turned into 10 steals for Rutgers, only two for Duke. And Vivian Stringer, we see over there, only coach to take three teams to the Final Four in a women's game. That's I love right. her passion. And Gail Gestenkors was not seeing the kind of passion she wanted after her team. They came to the bench that time, and she unloaded on them. 
you know, you're not going to show passion. I'll show you what passion is. And here it is. I love that. Get in their face. If you're not coming with it as a coach, you better bring the energy that's necessary. Two point ball game, nine minutes to go. For the right to play Arizona State in the championship game. And Rutgers really ratcheting up the defense. Wayner and Harding back in there together. Harding pull up jumper. No. Another rebound to Carson. Vivian Stringer has gone to her bench. Brittany Ray is in there. Junide back in there. McCurdy is there, and look at that. A two-point shot. Vaughn, of all people, knocks it down, and we are tied. This is a Rutgers team that, Mike, you can sense it. We're sitting here so close. They're intense. They believe they can beat a Duke team that spent so much time as the number one team in the country. First tie since it was eight apiece. Bales backing in on Vaughn. Tough shot. There was a stretch of time early in this half where they had decided to go inside and they had great success. It was the defense of Rutgers, all the pressure they were putting out front that limited that. They need to continue to pound the ball inside. Well, you can see it in the Rutgers players' eyes. They think they have Duke wounded and ready to fall. But Allison Bales, a lot of guts on the offensive end. Jumper by Carson. Good Boy, is Rutgers energized. Yeah. And they're just waiting here to spring the trap on defense. They're incredibly smart defenders, Rutgers. They bring athleticism, but they also bring basketball IQ to that side of the basketball. Harding, good step out by Vaughn. Now Wayner, shot clock at three. Harding to Wanisha Smith, got it off in time. Bales is there. Nobody blocked out Allison Bales, and Kia Vaughn really upset with Brittany Ray. I don't know why she'd be bothered by the 5'9 guard. She's not going to box out Bales. Be a tough job of it. When you're pressuring and scrambling like that, that's the one danger, Mike. You forget a, a checkout assignment and you give up an easy one. 5 9 against 6 7. It's already over. 43 41. Duke by a bucket. 6 24 to go. I don't think Duke expected this. Carson. Vaughn offensive rebound. Ooh. Wow. So close to a travel. She looks like she's hurt. She is. So already wearing that sleeve on her right knee and she comes up gimpy. Bad pass. McCurdy too high, threw it away. We've got a timeout, 5.57 left. Duke number one fighting for its life. Like maybe her right ankle is is was it? Oh yeah, she stepped on the uh, stepped on Bales. You think it's ankle or the yeah. leg? Ankle? Yeah, yeah, I think the sleeve just slipped, so she adjusted that. But she stepped on. Yeah, yeah. Her See foot. that?
The NCAA Women's Championship is presented on ESPN by Orbitz. Say big at Orbitz.com. Just Orbitz and go. Thank you. Uh, That's fine. Thank you. My, uh, but you're the only, that's the only good ice cream here. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented on ESPN by Orbitz. Say big at Orbitz.com. Just Orbitz and go. Now, of course, we are supposed to eat healthy, but John Swafford, the commissioner of the Atlantic Coast Conference and his terrific, terrific staff, uh, are not letting us eat healthy right now. There's John. Does such a terrific job both on the men's and women's side with this conference. Known him for a long time, such a good guy, as well as a tremendous administrator. Under six minutes to go. Allison Bales has been the star in the second half for Duke. 11 of her 19 points. She's hit all four field goals rise. Great pass there, and then the miss by Gay. Bales with a perfect pass. Gay a little bit out of control and couldn't hit it. As hard as these teams have played on the defensive end, Mike, Respectively, Rutgers has 14 fouls and Duke has two. So neither team's been in the bonus. And these players have played as hard on the defensive end. That takes incredible discipline to play as hard and as smart defensively without fouling. There's the double team. Two point lead, and again, Rutgers burning a lot of time. Not even into their offense. Shot clock down at five for Adjavon. Penetrates, threw up a prayer, knocked out of bounds. That's going to be a shot clock violation. And I just don't understand how you spend so much time getting nothing done and then getting into your offense. Right, it's spending an awful lot of time way out on the perimeter. Give Duke some credit for their defensive abilities as well. They have been top two with LSU on that side all year long. Harding gives it up to Wainer. Fails from 20. Smith will try one from the corner. Clanks it off the side. Shot clock continues to run. Wainer from almost half court. She could have been in Durham. Yeah. That was a ways away. They take many more shots like that, they'll be back in Durham. <laughs> Nine seconds on the shot clock. I don't think she needed to rush it quite that much. But she did, and it's tougher for her out there. Carson, again, the shot clock down to eight. Down the lane, collision, no whistle. And ahead to Smith. Can Vaughn get back? Yes, she does. Kia Vaughn, great hustle. This is a take no prisoners basketball game. And Javon all the way underneath. She has it knocked out of bounds. There hasn't been a possession that Rutgers has given up on all game long. Smith had two steps on a power forward slash center, and she still got back. Kia Vaughn. Vaughn's a wonderful athlete. Tremendous athlete. Skilled basketball player. And those are two different things. She is both. Shot clock at four for Carson. Reverse, no. That's the best look they've had in a while, though. Yeah, and that's Wainer. A season ago, Wainer was not a good player at keeping you in front on the defensive end. She has worked really hard at that. She's improved a lot on the defensive end. That's helped them be number one. Harding. And Duke not getting inside very much. Bales fouled on the double team. Since Carsons gets a quality look, cannot put it home on the opposite side. Vivian Stringer, that's all right. Hang in there, baby. We got 317 to play. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're feeling a little bit better. Look at that. Yeah, she looks frustrated. What's uh, Bales the free throw line? Five of seven. Bales has been the difference. Yeah, she has. She really has. <laughs> Okay. How many of her points in the This regional championship on Monday night will be going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the Final Four in Cleveland, Ohio next weekend. Arizona State already has its ticket punch for Monday night. They await the winner of this one. And this game certainly in doubt with Duke with a two point lead with 317 to go. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, it's just this simple right now in the Duke huddle. Shante Black, one of the Duke players, said to her team, the starters on the bench, Ladies, it's play hard or go home. Lindsey Harding and Juanisha Smith Blake shook their heads like, we know. Gail Gestenkorst, on the other hand, was very calm. She came to the huddle and said, hey, good job on defense. This is our game. I know it's our game. You just need to slow down, show some patience on offense, and quit rushing. Bales with 19 points. She has been the difference offensively. Five out of seven from the line. Give her 20. Allison Bales, season high is 21. Her career high is 22. And she's got 20 of the 44. Yeah, she's been the difference. They haven't had an answer for her at times on the box. Gail gets, of course, after the loss to NC State, right here in Greensboro, the only loss is on this floor, wrote first loss, last loss on the blackboard. It's a message she hopes her team takes to in the last three minutes. They lost to North Carolina State in the conference tournament. In the zone. Zurich. Oh, nice touch. It's the reason she's in the starting lineup. High post shots. There's the run out, Juanisha Smith. Duke never misses an opportunity to kick it ahead. Yeah, they make the 30 to 40 foot pass as well as any team in the country. They leap, they get out, and they're unselfish. The lead back to four, 229 and counting. Well, I've been impressed with Adjavon. Slashes in against Bales, got it, the foul. That's why. Great toughness. Great attack mentality, exceptional basketball and athletic skills. Watch the adjustment in the air and the ability to take contact and finish. Who is going to go at her size and attack Allison Bales with this kind of intensity exactly. and intent? That is great stuff, Mati Ajavon. 5'8 against 6'7. Got the guts of a burglar to go inside and do that. And she's cut the lead to one. Just love how hard these women have played. This has been a very competitive basketball game. Here's Harding. Remember, no 10 second count. Smith, good ball fake. She fouled by Vaughn. So Anisha Smith returns the favor at the other end. She goes in against the 6 4 Vaughn and draws the foul. Three on Vaughn, four on Bales. 
late game execution. You know Duke is going to absorb some pressure. How do they handle it? Well, they look to score on it. And Juanisha Smith, who's played the one, the two, and the three spots, is as good a finisher around the rim as they've got. She started the season shooting very poorly. Extra work after practice all year long has made her a better shot and a bigger threat, and it's paying off right now. She's got the best strength on the team, biggest max on the bench press, and she uses every bit of that solid frame to finish on plays like that. Will it be Adjavon again, or will somebody else step up? Shot clock at 10. Adjavon trying to penetrate. Nice kick out to Zurich. Wide open. That's the person to find. Adjavon is doing it all. She doesn't make the basket. She gets the assist. She has played such a solid, thinking second half. 20 minutes where all of her decision making has been outstanding. Good pass. She's on Harding right now. 1.23 to go. Oh, great pass. Bales, perfect pass down to Karim Gay. Three assists for Bales. That's probably the biggest one she's ever had in her life. Yep, can't trade baskets here if you're Rutgers. You need some stops. The lead back to four. Duke won't fold. Rutgers won't go away. Mati Ajavad continues to make play after play in the second 20 minutes, whether she's scoring for herself, her ability to get inside the lane and either make shots or set shots gets it right to Zurich. But Duke is executing. It looks like they are not feeling the pressure of having been number one, not having a national championship. They're simply staying in the moment and executing. Ajavad has 17 points in the five games coming into this one. She was averaging 15.8 points a game, and she was hitting 41% of her long-range shots. She's kept them in this game. Allison Bales has done the same thing for Duke. They have both stepped up big time. Huge, made plays when necessary. That reset there was important. 16 fouls on Rutgers, so on their next foul, Duke will shoot. Both have two timeouts at their disposal. Both teams, huge as we come down the stretch. That was tipped, so it's not a backcourt violation. Harding, the brilliant defender on Adjavon, tipped away. And Harding, when she's playing Adjavon, you got to give Adjavon even that much more credit. She's probably the best all the ball defender in the country. Yeah, and she's bringing all kinds of heat on Adjavon. That tip was caused by the defense of Lindsey Harding. Sure was. Shot clock is already down at 13. This is Zurich. Now Adjavon will have to do it herself. Shot clock at seven. Harding on her, looking for a screen. Stumbled it, and Javon buries the three. Are you kidding? The ACC Defensive Player of the Year lost her footing, and Adjavon just pulled up and drilled the 20-footer. She is stone cold, folks. Mati Ajavon, you want to know why they struggled out of the gates? They did not have their rock, their leader, the player who gives them their toughness and their edge. Mati Ajavon, big moment, who cares? Step up and drain it. A one-point game. The NCAA Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz continues tonight at 9. K. Yow and the NC State Wolfpack go against Gino Oriama and the Yukon Huskies. The NCAA Women's Championship presented on ESPN by Orbitz, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. 30 seconds on the shot clock, so Duke can't hold it. They've got to run their offense. One, a two-point basket makes, still makes it a one-possession game, and you would have to feel, where else do you go but try to get it to Bales down low? Oh, I think you absolutely have got it, and you've got all the time in the world here. You've got the ball in the lead, so you're going to execute your offense, but the final player who should touch it, unless you've got three red jerseys around her, which should open your perimeter shot, then you're going to go ahead and let Allison Bales touch it. So Rutgers blows one timeout. They're down to one. Their next foul will put Duke at the free throw line, but you're right. I mean, if you're Rutgers, all you want here is a stop because you're going to get the basketball and the shot clock, depending on what Duke does here on the offensive end, would not be a factor for you as you try to win the game, but you need a stop. 
Can they beat this pressure? Rutgers is shooting 56% in the second half. Smith gets it up. About a 17-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. What's Harding going to be able to do on this possession? She's guarded by Essence Carson. There's Bales. No, offensive rebound by Smith, but she lost the ball. Basket all the way, Epiphany Prince. 18 seconds to go in the game. Bales back to Harding. And Gail Gaston Coors wants a timeout. Holy cow. The last Rutgers lead was 12-11. Now they're up 53 to 52. Allison Bales aggressively, assertively with 10 on the shot clock, confident. How about the board by Smith? But Prince rips it out of her hands. Now you think maybe you should take a timeout and get a good shot. The Prince says, no, I'm in charge here. I'm making this decision. This is a rookie 83 steal she had coming in. None bigger than this one right here, Mike Patrick. And what this score does for Rutgers is it saves their final timeout because she was aggressive and assertive. They got their final timeout should they need it. Apparently she's thinking a two on four fast break. I like the numbers. Now here's what you're thinking if you're Duke. Clearly you want two shots at the win here, Mike. You're gonna get into your quick hit offense. Your first shot has got to allow you a second look. So I don't care which direction you go in. You're probably gonna send Harding off the ball screen. You're gonna spread the side of the floor with Wayner as your shooter stretching you. And you've also got Allison Bales. Right. So if they commit to the shooter, you get it to Bales or vice versa. But two shots, minimum. What I was thinking on the last possession was Bales down low, not Bales from 19 feet. Exactly right. I was a little bit surprised, but they clearly put her at that elbow. She's made those jump shots today. I like that she was confident enough to take it, but where she's dominated is on the box. So you're right. You would have thought the last touch would have been on the post to Bales. Rutgers 24 and 8. Duke 32 and 1. Right now, 32 and 1 is down by a point. Harding. Vaughn picks her up. Harding lost the ball. A foul with 5.6 seconds to go. What a turnaround for Rutgers. Harding simply dribbled the ball and let it get away. We thought they would send her off a high ball screen, and the biggest screener you have is Allison Bales, but the mishandle, now you've got to enter it. You can that was only the fourth team foul. That's right. They can't even send them to the line. They've got to get a steal. A foul will not help until they get to seven. That's right. So actually, there are two fouls to be committed. Say each one takes a second and a half. We're down to two and a half. Mm -hmm. This is big, big trouble for Duke. It's exactly why we always show you the resets. How many timeouts does a team have, Mike? Is that and, why we do And it? how many fouls do you have? Because as you said now, you cannot make a play on the defensive end other than a steal that will help you. And clearly, that, listen, I thought the play was the right play with Harding coming off the screen. It's simply a mishandle. Up until that moment, in every big moment this season, Lindsey Harding had the answer. But Rutgers has got to be solid. No timeouts left. You've got to be able to inbound the basketball here. Have to be able to inbound it against a five second call and Duke is brilliant defensively. You've also just got to get it inbounds. Then there's going to be a foul. Then you have to turn around and do it all over again because there won't be free throw. That's right. And now Essence Carsons is your best athlete, but she's your inbounder. So you can't just throw it up and let her get it. Here's the long pass knocked away by Harding. Duke with another chance. Harding back the other way. Whistle a foul. One tenth of a second left. Are you kidding? And it was clearly, from here at least, a foul. And Harding, for the moment, redeemed herself for the turnover. She has not been to the foul line, folks. This was a dangerous Holy play. Cow. It's an awful long pass to make with one of the best defensive players in the country. That there is absolutely the foul. She's not been there yet. She's 75% on the season. Number eight all time in free throws made at Duke. 
One ties it, two wins it. What a pressure cooker. All she can do is tie. Oh. Lindsay Harding. No! Lindsay Harding, the all everything, all American for Duke, makes a great steal, gets a shot with a tenth of a second to go. Two free throws, a chance to win it and put the number one team in the country in the championship game. And she missed them both. What a devastating finish for Lindsay Hart. You live as a team and you die as a team. And look at her teammates in tough moments. You go to them for support. And that group is rallying around their leader, the person who got them to this moment. 75.9% free throw shooter, both too strong. Karim Gay nearly with a miracle follow. And C. Vivian Stringer has seen a miracle unfold in front of her eyes. And Gail Gestenkors suffers another huge disappointment on this floor here in Greensboro. And I think she's stunned. She simply can't believe it. Let's go to Holly. Coach Stringer, you had your worst loss ever as a Rutgers coach the last time you played Duke. What turned it around today? Just heart, heart, hard work, believing in each other, working hard and never giving up, and always knowing that ultimately we would be there if you're just willing to believe. The last few seconds are ticking off, Mati. What are you thinking as you get that last deal? Man, I'm just saying this is our destiny. There's no way we could give up right now. It's either now or not. We just got to go with it. We just got to win. You weren't yourself the last time you played Duke. What were you trying to do tonight? Um, we were just trying to be aggressive. You know, Duke has great players. Allison Bowles is a great player. I mean, we were just trying to get it in, play together. Just play together. Coach, last question for you. I know it's hard to look ahead right now, but Arizona State now on Monday. What do you think? I I'm just glad that we won this. I don't have time to even think about it. But Arizona's special. I did believe that that was our destiny, too, because we were supposed to play them in the Virgin Islands. Bad things happen, you know, with one of the young people. And uh, we've had a very close connection since then, so it's only appropriate that we had a chance to play it now. All right, thanks very much, Coach. Of course, she's referring to the death of Aubrey Johnson's brother. Rutgers was supposed to play Arizona State in that championship game, graciously agreed to call off the game. They'll finally get to meet now. Great job, Holly, and what a night for C. Vivian Stringer. And I'm sure she can't believe that the ACC Player of the Year, Lindsey Harding, on the number 